In this video, we will walk through the post-processing tools now built right into the V-Ray Virtual Frame Buffer in Blender. We'll cover light mix, render comparisons, render history, and much more, so you can do your post-processing right where you render. You can access the VFB from the V-Ray toolbar or simply by starting the renderer. On the left side of the VFB window, you'll find the History menu. If it is not available, go to the VFB settings. In the History tab, check the Enable box, then choose a destination folder. Make sure to save and close. The green plus icon will store the image in the History tab. From the A and B icon, you can enable the function to compare different renders. Next to the History tab, you have Filter Presets, that come with the installation of V-Ray, which can be quickly applied to the image. On the right side, you will see a folder with all the adjustment layers of the currently applied filter. This is where you can create your custom color corrections. In the layer menu, you have a range of color correction tools at your disposal to enhance your image. Let's apply a curves layer. From here, you can rename the layer. Underneath the name field, you can change the blending mode. Next to that is the opacity control. Use the master curve to adjust the contrast. By left clicking on the spline, you can create new points across it. By right clicking, you can open a menu where you can change the curve type. The red, green, and blue channels can also be adjusted. Use the exposure layer if your render is under or overexposed. The values in this image are good so there is no need to change them. From the Highlight Burn slider, you can reduce overly bright spots usually appearing on shiny surfaces. The Filmic Tone Map contains different types of mapping curves and gamma corrections, which can help you achieve a more natural looking highlights and contrast in your render. For color grading, you can use your custom lookup table files. Create a LUT layer and load a lookup table file. All of these layers can be used together with masks for greater control. For example, let's use a hue and saturation layer to change the color of the bus. It's recommended that the LUT and filmic tone map layers remain on top, so move the hue and saturation layer beneath them. Right click and apply a crypto matte mask, then pick the bus. The crypto matte mask will apply only to the objects you've selected. From here you can preview the mask, and if needed, you can invert it. Now return to the Properties panel and adjust the Hue slider. For the Crypto Matte Mask to work, make sure it is enabled in the render channels before you render. Use V-Ray lens effects to mimic real-world camera lens effects, like bloom and glare. You have settings to adjust the size, intensity, and much more. You have options that mimic lens scratches and dust, which will give more realistic results. You can expand their menu with additional options. For example, let's change the scratch pattern to hexagonal. The lens effect is mainly visible around bright reflections or lamps. If you want to draw more attention toward the center of the image, you can add a vignetting effect. Its shape can be adjusted directly from the preview window, or you can use the properties panel. After applying color corrections, you can save them as your own custom preset, which can be loaded to other images. From here, you can quickly apply the presets you have already saved. Inside the source layer, there is the light mix feature. It allows you to adjust the lights in your scene directly from the VFB. Make sure the light mix is enabled in the render channels before rendering. Essentially, it is all lights in the scene on separate layers, allowing you to control them individually or turn them all off at once. Now let's choose a light from the list and change its color. For example, let's adjust the color of that table lamp and make it slightly yellowish for a warmer look. Let's do the same for the headlights. The intensity of the lights can also be adjusted. It's a great way to see how different lighting setups affect your scene without the need to re-render. Any changes you make inside the light mix editor can be saved as a preset file which can be uploaded to a different scene with the same lighting setup. All changes you have made to the lights can be transferred to composite from where you can make further adjustments to individual render elements, such as diffuse, reflection, refraction, etc. 
Start by selecting the source layer and creating a render element. From the element menu, choose the specific element you want to adjust. Since I want to enhance the highlights on the bus, I'll select Specular. The blending mode is currently set to Add. I'll switch it to Overwrite so you can see how the render element looks on its own. Now let's return to Add mode, which amplifies the reflections. At the moment, this layer affects every object in the scene. To isolate the effect to just the bus, I'll apply a crypto matte mask and pick the bus. For more precise control over the specular highlights, you can add a curves adjustment layer and fine tune the values using the spline. Keep in mind, this approach is intended for artistic control rather than physical accuracy. We're adjusting the specular channel creatively to achieve a specific visual style. These are the main tools in the V-Ray frame buffer. Try V-Ray for Blender today and polish your render, all without ever leaving Blender.